Hello everyone, it's the War Hipster here coming at you with another Warhammer painting tutorial and today we are painting the mighty Ultramarines using this Lieutenant Calzius model. Let's not beat about the bush any further because what we are going to do is we're going to jump right in and start painting all of that armour. He has been primed in grey here and the colour that we're going to make is a roughly one to one mix of contrast medium and talisar blue. And what this is for, this is to give us our little pre-shade. on the armour. And we just want to coat this all over. Try and be as smooth as possible, so have lots of control as you do it. So don't kind of overload your brush. Take it as a section at a time, like I'm doing here. The reason we're using a slightly thinned down Talisar Blue is because the tone that we're going for is a very kind of specific Ultramarines type tone. And if we go pure Talisar blue, it's a little too deep and rich. If there is such a thing. Now you could do this without the medium, but I'm doing it with the medium because I want it to be kind of be like a halfway house between. What that contrast medium also allows me to do, is just have even more control over the flow of the paint. See, that's quite a lovely sky blue already that is coming up on the model. So as I say, just take it nice and steady, colouring in each section at a time. Don't drop the model like I just did there. <laughs> Just use the brush to mop up any of the excess as you go. Talisar blue and contrast medium mix applied, what you should have now is a really nice looking Spear of the Emperor, but we're not going to leave it at that. What we're now going to do is we're going to make him look like the Ultramarine that he is. And the colour that we are now going to use is Ultramarine's blue. And we're just going to now use this all over the top of that Talisar blue that we've already applied. like this. Oh, 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 oh,
you should now have is a really lovely looking blue, but unfortunately in this case, sometimes we do have a few little splotchy mistakes. For example, just here on the shoulder pad and well, I had a big one just here on the side of the leg, which I had to fix. So in order to fix that, what you wanna do is you wanna take a roughly 10 or 11 parts contrast medium to one part McCrag blue mix. And this creates a really lovely kind of thin blue glaze like that. You now wanna use this just over the top of the flats of the armor panels where we wanna kind of fix any mistakes just to strengthen out any of that color and also smooth out any of the mistakes that we might have made. So for example here, on that shoulder pad. Like that. Just trying to avoid anywhere where the ultramarine's blue has really settled in the recesses, as well as if possible, any of the edges of the power armor. Like that. And so with that done, we should have some absolutely gorgeous looking Ultramarines blue armor. And yeah, how great's that? Now, don't worry about highlighting it just yet. We're gonna do that a little bit at the end. What we are gonna do is we're gonna move on and paint some of the rest of the base coats. Now, the first color that we're gonna use is Black Templar. And we're gonna use this for all of the soft joints in his armor. So areas like this bit here on his back of his leg and his butt. Uh, but what we would also want to do, <clears throat> got a frog in my throat. What we also want to do is we want to use this on areas like the little pouches and holsters and his belt as well. And if your intercessor or lieutenant or captain or whatever it is that you're painting currently has a bolt rifle, you'd want to paint in the casing of the bolt rifle with the Black Templar like this as well. So the next colour we're going to do on our Lieutenant is we're going to be painting in the gold details. And the colour that we're going to be using is Retributor Armour. And what we want to do is get some thin down on our palette and start painting them in. So we're going to be doing it all over the Aquila because, you know, Ultramarines. And we want to do this on the rim of his shoulder pads as well. Because this guy is going to be part of the second company as depicted in almost every single piece of Ultramarine's art, but not all of them. So you just want to be very careful around all of that blue as you do this. So what we're also going to do is going to use it on areas such as any kind of decorative features, for example, the pommel of his sword and the bits on the scabbard as well. And any of these laurels that you can see on the leg and on the shoulder. So just take your time as you do this bit. And then we'll come back. And with that done, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna take some thinned down iron warriors and we're gonna use this to paint in all the mechanical parts and of his backpack and we're also going to do it on the handle of the bolt pistol we're not going to do it on the blade of the power sword because we want this to be super blingy and awesome so we're going to do that slightly differently in just a moment and with that done what we're now going to do is we're going to paint in the scabbard and the color that we're going to use for that is Saigor Brown. Just want to be very careful. Don't want to use loads at a time. Just want to start painting this all over. Like that. And with that done, what we're now going to do is going to use some Skeleton Horde. I'm going to use this to paint in the parchment down here on his belt. And on his back. I 
And with that done, what we're now gonna do is gonna use some thinned down iron hand steel to paint in the blade. What we're also gonna do is we're gonna use this iron hand steel to paint in the little screen on his wrist. And the little buttons here as well. And with that done, it's now time to start shading all those metallics. And the color that we're gonna use first is Fire Slayer Flesh. And we're gonna use it for all of that gold like this. And with that done, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna shade all of those silver details, but not the blade, with some Basilicanum Gray. And next up, we're going to shade that power sword with some Griff Charger Grey. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're just going to make sure that all of our Ultima symbols are neatened up with some grey sear. Now, I've already done this as I've been going along but I've actually just noticed a little bit here. It just needed neatening back up. So we want those to be nice and bright for this next stage. And with that done, what we're now gonna do is use some Apothecary White, just over the top of all those those Ultima symbols. Uh, let's just start with this one on the shoulder. Just wanna apply this over the top and it won't seem like it's doing a lot, but it does just kind of give us a sort of grayish tone to them which kind of just makes it a little bit more obvious when it's highlighted rather than just a highlight straight over the pure gray here you can also use this to add a little bit more kind of emphasis to the shade around it just very subtle like that you see And with that done, what we're now going to do is going to use some Gilliman Flash because, well, we've used Ultramarines Blue, we might as well use the name of the Primark of the Ultramarines Flash colour as well. And we're just going to use this all over our Space Marine's face. Just using the brush to mop up any excess that we might have. You generally only need one brush full to do a face. And next up, we're going to use some skeleton horde to paint in his hair. Just being really careful when we get to that hairline. so as not to spill Skeleton Horde all over that lovely flesh. And so with that done, we've got all of our base coats now applied to our miniature. And he's looking pretty awesome. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do all of the highlights and we're kinda gonna go in reverse order. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna use some Flayed One Flesh and we're gonna use this to highlight all of his skin. So not quite reverse order, but we want to get the skin done just before we do the hair. And so what we do is we take a small amount of this flayed one flesh, then we just start picking out the raised details on his face. So areas like the bridge of his nose, his eyebrows, his cheekbones, his eyelid. Just being very careful here. 
being very gentle with the brush. Just trying to pick out that little detail there like that. You just want to go around like this, just take your time, and then we'll come back. And with that flayed one flesh applied, what we now want to do is we want to use a small amount of wraith bone to paint in his teeth and the whites of his eyes. Like this. What we can also do is we can use this now to highlight all of the hair and all of the parchment. Just by picking out the strands and any of the sharp corners on those seals. And with that done, we want to take a tiny amount of Black Templar. I want to use this to color in his pupils. Like that. And so with that done, our face is now finished. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab some iron hand steel I'm going to start highlighting all that silver, including the energy weapon or power sword. It's not an energy weapon. Now the highlight on the sword won't appear like it does very much, but it does just kind of re-establish the highlights you can see there on the box piece. It looks pretty good. But down here, it won't do very much, but it does kind of re-establish the tone and creates a difference between that shaded iron hand steel and then highlighted iron hand steel. And with that done, what we're now gonna do is gonna highlight all of that gold with some Liberator Gold. With that liberator gold applied, what we now want to do is we want to take some Stormhost Silver and we want to use this to highlight the sword uh, edges. So, for example, this side of the blade here and this side of the blade here as well. But what we also want to do is we want to use this Stormhost Silver to just pick out any of the sharpest areas on the silver and on the gold. So just a little corner there on the Ultima and on there as well. In here, I'm just kind of all over really with the Stormhost Silver. And with that done, all of our metallics are now painted. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use some thinned down Corax White. We're gonna use this to highlight all of the Ultima symbols. And we're gonna do it on this one first, I reckon. And with those Corax white highlights applied to those Ultima symbols, all that's left to do now is the little computers on his arm and of course the armor highlights. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna work on those armor highlights and the color that we're gonna use is Calgar Blue. And all we wanna do, just wanna start highlighting every edge on our Ultramarine's armor. Like that. With this Calgar Blue. And with all that Calgar Blue applied, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna use some Blue Horror just to pick out the corners of these armor panels. Like this, just to give it a little bit of a spot highlight. To give the impression of the light catching off those sharp areas. And with that done, what we're now gonna do is use a little bit of warp lightning, not very much at all. And we're gonna use this to paint in the large screen over the top of that metal. Like this. As you can see, that Stormhost Silver and that Iron Hand Steel are shining through to give us a really kind of 
glitzy, shiny computer screen. And next up, we're going to use some Blood Angels Red over the top of those little buttons. Just there, like that. And with those shiny buttons and screens done, what we're now going to do is going to use a small amount of Cycle Brown. Now, this is entirely optional. We use this little tiny amount to draw some text in on the purity seals. Just doing these little lines going down them. Like this. You only want to use a really small amount of Cycle Brown at once. As you do this. And with that done, all that's left to do is to base our Ultramarine. Now I recommend that you do this in the style of the rest of your army. Or you can follow along with me if you like, but it's going to be a very simple method. What we're going to be doing is just going to be using some Sterling Battlemire first and foremost. And we're just going to start putting this all over his base. Well, apparently we're not, according to the Sterling Battlemire pot. He doesn't want to be open right now. <laughs> Just using a little Games Workshop texture spreader here. Just to smooth this out all around the base. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to dry brush all of that Sterling Battle Mine with some Tyrant Skull. And with that done, I've added some tufts to the base because, well, our Ultramarine is pretty much finished. All that's left to do is to paint in the rim and to do any transfers that you might want to do, if any at all. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the rim with some thinned down Corvus Black. That might take a couple of coats. Just to make sure that it's a nice and strong colour. And with the base complete, our Ultramarine is now ready to march from a crag for courage and honour for Ultramar for Gilliman and for the Emperor. Yep, that's a lot of battle cries. Um, yeah, I really enjoy painting Ultramarines. I, they're a, a personal favorite of mine um, and a personal favorite of Games Workshop, of course. Uh, it's because the scheme is just so iconic and, well, brilliant. Um, the gold and the blue with the white Ultima doesn't get much better than that. These battle kings of McCrag really do come to life with the contrast paint and I really enjoyed making this one for you. If you enjoyed this one and you'd like to support me further, like these legends on the screen, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, do all of that good stuff. And if you'd like to stay up to date, make sure to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.